Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Taylor Welding, my name's Chris, and today we're gonna to talk about stingers, welding rods, how to keep them from shaking. I'm getting some uh, questions in the comments. I'm gonna go over a few of those. And if you notice anything in this picture that is not supposed to be, put it in the comments. <laughs> and if you don't know, wait till the end of the video and I will uh, show you. All right, guys. Oh, and hit the like button. I always forget to say that. It helps me. It helps me out, and uh, that's the goal is to, you know, help each other out. Wellers are stingy with the like button. Okay, this is a T300. I think that's what they're called. It is about 15 or 16 years old, maybe older. And the reason it looks brand new is because I don't use these. Uh, this, look how big it is. It's massive, and it's not insulated. That's the main thing. Uh, if I used this for five minutes, there'd be an arc burn on everything God's made. It would just, just ridiculous. I, I'm so used to using insulated stingers. Uh, I just don't use these. Now, pipeliners love these things. I mean, they just, they're just crazy about them. And I think, if I had to guess, I never really had this conversation with why they liked them so much, but I bet it's because it's got a big, long handle on it, and you can get way under that pipe. You can stay back here you know, not get fire all over you. And it's open and it, it probably dissipates heat pretty quick. Uh, but this is just, if you're fabricating, this ain't it, I'm just telling you. But anyway, we're gonna put this away. Now, this is called a stubby rod saver. This is a 300 amp, this is a 400 amp. They don't make them anymore. I bought a bunch of them a long time ago, but, um, We'll use this for demonstration. Now the question was, uh, and this isn't a 332, it's about a 332 7018, how do you keep it from shaking? And <laughs> that is a problem. Uh, this is a 18 6010. And oh, by the way, don't be asking me about 6013s. I have no idea, I have no clue. I'm serious. I'm limited to the normal stuff. 6010, 7018, 70 plus. You know, hippies, they all run about the same. I'm sure a 6013 is the same. I'm sure I can well with it, but I don't know anything about it. Uh, just go ahead and put that out there. People, a lot of people ask me about a 6013. Maybe it's an AC rod. Like I said, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but I do know how to run this 6010 in about any position you can ever imagine. Uh, any which way you can think of. But we're going to pretend like this 6010 is a 7018-332. Now, if I'm throwing you off with all this stuff, this... For you young guys learning how to weld, if this rod was a little bit smaller, it would be shaking. Just me holding it here would just be, brrr, you know, shaking like a cat crap in peach season. If you've been drinking all night, it's really gonna shake. So what I would do if I had to weld uphill on a piece of pipe or anything that had to be, look nice, uh, I'm gonna show you right now. I would, I would bend that rod like that. That's the first thing I would do. I almost did it before I told you. And then I would probably push it over a little bit. That to me is comfortable. Now I can, I can get up under there with me out of the way. Because if this thing was straight, you have to get all the way up under there. And then there's fire falling over. The idea is to get away from it. So get it however you need to, where you can have that rod angle to you just a little bit. It's supposed to straight up supposed to be the best way, but I have found the best way to be just a little angle back. A little angle back. And this is a 332, so it's shaking all over the place. I'd get under there, and I, what I like to do is just steady the rod just a little bit right there when you start off. Because if you pop this thing on the bottom of the pipe or whatever, it's going to it's going to be all over the place. So steady it, scratch it off, and get it going. And this thing's going to start, you know, it's going to start eating down. It gets about right here. Your fingers are going to get hot. Don't keep welding and tough through it. You're just gonna screw your gloves up. When you get to the top of the pipe, your fingers are gonna be all bent back on your glove and everybody's gonna call you hot fingers and it's not cool. So, steady it when you start off if you have to. I don't have to, but I've, you know, I've done it for a long time. And you can ease back while you're welding and just kind of get, get into this position right here. Now, the most important thing about welding is be comfortable. You've got to get comfortable. I mean, it's so important. I see people, the first thing that happens when I hand somebody, a helper, anybody that wants to learn how to weld, I'm all for teaching somebody how to weld. If you want to learn how to weld, I'm in, because it, it really saved my bacon. First thing they do is go, okay, I'm welding. <laughs> and they're just like this. 
That ain't it. That ain't it. And they're holding the stinger so damn tight, their knuckles are white. Relax. Relax and get in, just get all comfortable. Get all up in there and get all, all just real, just real comfortable, you know? And then, okay, well, this isn't comfortable. For me to get under here, under this piece of pipe, this isn't, this, now I'm not comfortable. So bend your rod and choke back on that stinger. Get back here. Now you got your rod bent and then you can, uh-oh, I'm right where I need to be right now. Now, I'm going to weld this piece of pipe. I'm going to steady it. Start off. Come up the side. And if you start getting in a bind, just try to get past dead man's curve. And then you can break off if you have to. And then reposition. And then do it again. Come on up. Now, I hope that helps. Um, that's it on how to keep your rod from shaking. Don't drink too much the night before. Steady the rod with your finger and get in crazy good comfortable position. Prop up on something. Even when I'm running my rollout wheel, I got my leg wedged up against my truck or something. I don't have to, but if I really wanna make that weld look super slick, that rod tip's gotta be still. And the only way you can get it still is by you know, snuggling up with something, something you're holding on to, some, some, and you, it can, if you don't have anything and there's nowhere to get, you can use this trick right here. You can hook that pinky on this pinky and that's your steady rest. And you can go on with it and you can put a wrench on the, on, in the flange or a bullpen or something. Do whatever you gotta do to get steadied up on something because it's the bottom. You know, the bottom's hard. Uh, and most people try to quarter the pipe. Do not do that. If you're just starting out welding, you need to learn how to weld that pipe from the bottom to the top without rolling it. I'm sorry, it's just the way it is. I know grown men that have people rolling 12 inch for them with a forklift because <laughs> the, the bottom's ugly. Don't be that guy. Learn it now. You, gotta, you, you can't be doing that. That's the welder they don't call back a lot of times. So let's move on to the next question. I'm going to try to make some more videos over here. I have recently retired from pipe welding, so I don't make videos in the field anymore. Uh, okay, Dylan, he has been trying to be home more. He just had his kid. He had his first kid, and he wants to know how to get into uh, gig rig welding in the patch. All right, well, you're going to have to go where the work is first. I'll tell you how I did it. I got in a camper, we sold everything we had. This is a true story. I told my wife to sell everything and move in a camper. Uh, I was working construction, traveling around, and I was just trying to be close to her. We were just getting married, and she did. She sold everything, I sold everything, we moved in a camper, and I started moving around for work. And I decided to rig out a welding truck. And just so, this is a complete side note, but it's important. If you put yourself in that kind of bind where you've got to make it, you have got to do it. I, I mean, I, we sold her 401k to invest in my welding rig. It was all on me, buddy. <laughs> and I didn't know how to pipe weld. I mean, I didn't know how to downhill pipe weld. I didn't know that much about pipe welding in general. So I rode my dirt bike out to a pipeline and looked at the weld on it. That's the truth. That's how I figured out what to do. So I've been where you guys are at. That's why I started this YouTube channel. That's why I want to help you because I, nobody, this was before YouTube, you know? So if I had somebody helping me, it would have really meant a lot. Um, anyway, so go to um, where the work is and try to, try to hang out there. Try to, try to find jobs and that job ends. Try not to just run off to, the, to West Texas or something. You know, they, the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you set your lifestyle up like that. So don't get the brand new camper. Get, get the one that's used. And, and you know, I'm just buying somebody else's problems. I'm, I'm trying to stay on topic. But it gets old because people that get into these predicaments where they got the new truck, the new camper, the new, all this new shit, they can't, uh, they can't stay. They can't go a week without a paycheck. If you can go a week or two, you can find other jobs around that area if there's work there. So you've moved where the work is and then you're going to kind of hang tight and other welders will just go. They got to go right now. Can't make it without a paycheck. Got to go. Why don't you just hang out and go fishing? You don't know too many people. You know, you're doing, you're doing right by you and your family. 
and some th something will come up. Might not be exactly what you want, but you'll take that job, and and then something else will come up, and then it'll it'll kind of get going. You'll start making contacts, and you're the guy that's that's around. You're there, you know, and uh, that's what I did. Uh, as far as uh, if you don't have a rig and you're just wanting to learn how to weld, because there's a lot of people on here that are just getting into it, I would recommend a shutdown. Shutdowns, turnarounds, outages, uh, new construction, uh, I've done all of them, and that was where I learned the most. I learned rigging and how to operate cranes and forklifts, and just you really get well-rounded there. So uh, that ought to get you set up pretty good on that question. Uh, find the work get close, work the job uh, before you go buy a house and get all in and then they move the work somewhere else. I know a lot of guys that do that. And I stayed in the tra travel trailer for 18 months and figured I could find enough work to keep us going. And there was a few slow times where I had to do something else. Uh, you know, but I could weld. You know, if you're a welder, you got work, usually. Usually, it might not be what you wanna do. I've welded in a shipyard, which is the bottom of the totem pole, man. It was a bummer, but I had a job, I had food, I had, uh, I could make my truck payment, you know. So, next question. Bear with me. Do a video on amps for bead hot pass cap on pipe. Some of us uh, just start welding without a good heat or starting amps. All right. Here's the deal. All of them are different. Every single one of them. Um, but I'll tell you, you know what? I'll make another video about that. I'll do a whole video about that. I might even have my welding machine in it. So I'll do that one tomorrow. And the camera wasn't adjusted where you could see the whole chuck key, but this is the ultimate no-no in a machine shop. <laughs> I had to wear this around my neck one time and it was a bummer. Have an awesome day guys. Later.